most of Christmas past. December 25th has come and gone. It is now the 26th. And that's why we're bringing you in with the music of the new year. Before you know it, we'll be plunging into 2014, such a critical central year uh, for not just our society, but the entire planet. Now, we'll be back tomorrow night with a new, original, you know, pushed out live to everybody, InfoWars Nightly News. And I think we're going to have David Knight doing next, uh, you know, next show tomorrow. He'll do Monday. Oh, he'll be doing. So, so I, I, I'm not sure who's doing tomorrow night's show. Maybe it's going to be me. Maybe I've been drafted in. Again, we're teleprompter free news here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but here is our interview with Smashing Pumpkins founder and lead singer Billy Corrigan. Uh, just what an amazing patriot and free thinker. Well, a year ago, he visited us in this very same studio, and it's one of the most popular interviews we've ever done with viewers of InfoWars Nightly News and everybody on the radio show and out in YouTube world. With more than 30 million records sold, he is one of the biggest rock stars in history. He founded the Smashing Pumpkins, which I've been a big fan of for years, since high school, really, or I guess college. But the real reason I'm a fan is he is an amazing thinker and gets me to think. As dumb as I am, that's that's hard to do. Billy Corrigan of Smashing Pumpkins uh, here in town uh, to play in Austin, Texas to a sold-out crowd. Good to have you here, my friend. Thank you, Alex. What we're seeing right now is a turf war, right? A turf war between uh, old Republicans, you know, uh, uh, the, the Rush Limbaugh, what they call the old white men crowd. You know, as they're struggling for definition in a, in a rapidly changing America, then you have the you know the, the, the coming immigrant classes, which way they're going to go. Um, you know, social liberals who are willing now willing to look the other way. Why we're doing you know these terrible things around the world with drone? I mean, suddenly now those things aren't big issues to social liberals, which is black sites torture. I, unbelievable, unbelievable to me that these are not mainstream issues on the front pages every day when our government is openly acknowledging in many ways warrantless wiretapping. Just the fact that we're being spied on blows my mind. They came out in Reuters and said, "Yeah, the Pentagon. Everybody reads your bank account every day." I mean, totally illegal. Nixon was going to go to jail for it. And now it's just like big deal. Right. So my point is, is so you see a turf war, right? So here's this dividing line. Okay, let's say, let's say free thinkers like you and I are over here and we're in our little huddled mass. And then, and then this crowd over here who wants to control everything. And then, and let's call it the, the uninformed in the middle. Well, this turf war is going on. It's like a football game where nobody can really score a touchdown, right? They haven't stamped people like you and me out. And, and certainly we're not going to stamp them out anytime soon. So it's back and forth. But if something happens where there's this open moment where suddenly 10, 20 million people are suddenly searching for new information because something gets exposed, you know what I mean? I think you have to be able to step into that void with a message that's greater than fear or greater than the, than the counter response to the fear. Because, look, and, and you and I have talked in private besides publicly. And... You know, as I said when I said it this in the same spot before, even if you're right, it's so hard for your average American to believe it's true. Do you know what I mean? So there's a tra sort of a transitional moment. It's like in a, it's like you know, in the Matrix when they realize they're in the Matrix. There's sort of a moment like, how is this even possible? Or when they talk about people get out of jail and they just want to go back to jail. Well, it's like the reality is so bad the guy goes, I went back in the Matrix. That's my point. That's my point. I know people. I know people, and I'm sure many of your listeners have these conversations around dinner tables where, you know, you reel off a list of facts. Did you realize this? Thing? And they go, I just don't want to know. I mean, they, they're, they're raising. And it's because they have a legitimate point. The power structure seized. What do you do about it anyways? But then if you give in, that just greases the skid. But but my point is, is those people that sit around those dinner tables that 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 admit to their son or their daughter or their uncle, hey, yeah, you got a point, I know things are weird and govern, but I'm not gonna do it. But, but there will come a point where it's going to touch them in a way where they're gonna have to do something. Well, I'll expand on that. I'm now hearing mainline talk radio. When Mohammed Karzai came out and said that the US government runs Taliban Al-Qaeda, which is well known, I heard all these hosts now going, you know, our government is, isn't even our government, it's interests that just want wars. Because they're like, they run them in Libya, they run them in Syria. Karzai says they run Al-Qaeda, Taliban, and 
And then I heard the local host and I heard others go, you know, they do grow the opium over there. They're shipping. Why do we have a war on drugs? It's like, I think, I, listen, I don't want to be over positive, but if people just get the word out, say, like put your body against the machine, realize that these things are going on, I don't think it can move forward without our consent. And, I, and it's not even. Exactly, but see, that's exactly my point, right? As, 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 as with any. Let's 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 be cold. It's a game, right? This is a big game, and who gets to win and who gets to control how the pieces move about the board? Okay, there is going to come a point. They may knock the whole board off. Well, that may happen, but that would only happen if they're willing to admit that people like you are right, <laughs> right? That'll be a double. Down. That'll totally legitimize. Like double down, right? Right. But the point is, is it, 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 let's say let's say there's something cataclysmic worthy of knocking all the pieces off the board, worthy of shutting down the internet, worthy of silencing any dissident voices, even ones that would be considered mild dissident voices, like has happened in other historical moments of tyranny, right? And what and what and every time it was the same justification. We're doing this for the motherland or the fatherland or the they'll be you know the, the excuse will exist. It's what the populace does in that moment that will determine whether it's going to be 50 more years worse or, or it's going to have to go through the incredibly difficult uh, kvetching <laughs> of reality. If we've been in an imperial system all along, which <laughs> there is evidence to suggest that sure. we've been in an imperial system all along, well, we're going to have to be accountable. Every person's going to have to be accountable on some emotional. No, I agree, and there's going to be a price, but but the price is too big to keep going. What you just said, if they do push it to that, I think all the fake liberals, all the fake conservatives, what's happening is they've denied, 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 and when you deny so long, you get to where you'll deny anything just to say you were right, but then it becomes so, uh, what was the word you used, absurdist, yeah. before we went on air, it becomes so absurdist that it that it that that it becomes a joke, and I think that's what's happening in the. It was like Robert Gibbs three weeks ago on TV. You know, he came out and said, he said that they they told him there's no such thing as drones, and this is a guy who's supposed to go out there and put his entire credibility on the line. I mean, think of him as a human being. And he said it's Wizard of Oz. This is an admitted but program. I'm saying let's so let's yeah. look at it from a slightly spiritual perspective. I mean, Robert Gibbs is a real human being. Right? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure he's got a family. Smart guy. Okay. He's obviously made his way up through the ranks. He probably worked, you know, crap jobs. And so there he is. You're the you're the PR guy for the president. I mean, if you're a PR guy, I mean, that's the job. You're, you're the number one guy in, in America. You've got the best job. When it comes to media. And then they tell you and they send out there and just basically lie. I mean, this guy's got to put his entire credibility, his entire career on the line and lie about something. And then why would he come out now and say it? I'm seeing more and because, more of that. Because it's like any other regime. He's thinking, I don't want to go down with this ship. You're seeing now there was another uh, uh, insider, uh, can't remember what it was about recently, where another guy just, he wrote a book. But see, I think that Gibbs moment was like my Piers Morgan moment. More and more people are going, I'm not going to play along anymore. But the question is, yeah. the question, if we're talking about it coldly like a game, right? The question is, does anybody care? If the, you know, the tree falls in the forest. So the spiritual issue is people better start caring again. But, they but that's my point to you is you can win all day long on the facts. Okay. I once, I once here and sat here and said, even if everything you say is wrong, I like the argument. Now let me reverse it. Even if everything you say is right. There is a segment of the people in this war, in this country, particularly, and in this world, that we need to get on board. We're not going to get them on board with fear. We're not going to get them on board with facts. We have to touch some other part. So of what, exactly, what do I do? I mean, I, that's what I'm saying I think you have to you have to diversify your message into a broader thing that's sort of unassailable. Okay, let's use the Star Wars analogy. The Death Star is orbiting the moon. Star Wars, you know, Episode Four. It's about to shoot the moon, and that's right when they blow it up. It's kind of that moment when both line up. That's the, the stars are aligning. It's going to be in that fulcrum point. Either the dark side's going to win, yeah, and, and set you back got a thousand years, yeah, or, or you're going to you're going to go in. I mean, because just because you stop that Death Star doesn't mean you can stop the next one and the next one and the next one. Yeah, so it's it's a in that case it's a lone victory against a still larger force. Yeah, so we're entering this prime jump point zone, this crossroads. 
in, in closing, b b best interview I think I've ever done here. This is amazing. And I don't even just say this, this is a powerful. Uh, you said we need to have a spiritual talk, and I think this has been a transcendent talk. I want you to look at that camera out there and, and, and just right out there in the last five minutes and just you've got the floor. Other points you think are important because you've definitely taken me a long way into understanding. You said, Alex, you need to hit that next level. And you weren't, you're like, I don't know exactly what it is, but we all need to hit that next level to beat this. That Martin Luther King, Gandhi, or what Jesus talked about, that moment. So what in your gut, your spirit right now, what do we do then? I'm talking to the people because you're right. If they don't want this freedom, if they don't want to be free, if they want to be slaves, then we're going down. That's what I'm saying. We, 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 so what do we say to them? I think you have to find, it's, it's, it's look. Just because I wrote one good song doesn't mean people are going to listen to the next one or the next one or the next one. It's the, it's the, it's the collective message that I've been able to create that's allowed me to have a, a wonderful musical life. Because I've been able to create sort of a broader message that has an appeal to lots of different people for lots of different reasons. I think you've been at the tip of the spear for a long time. Personally, on some level, that's worn you down because you, you, you are literally shouting against a mountain every day. If you can draw from a deeper well of source, sources that go back thousands of years so i need to climb another mountain that's what i'm saying you go go read go read or or bring in somebody who's an expert in 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 people who have a deeper understanding that have, bring in the historical and spiritual perspectives because we're not the first people that have faced this yes we're the first people that have ever faced this in this way with technology being at the core uh the immediacy of communication but you can't tell me 500 years ago or a thousand years ago people weren't facing the same parrot well they were facing the roman army that was like you know super high tech compared to them tell me that it was any different tell me it was it well, was the natives facing people with guns yeah right I'm saying how 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 did how were those things overcome you said you're reading a book right now about the african slave trade i've read those too it's amazing I mean, yeah it's uh i i can't I think of the man the man's name was barth he traveled in in islamist uh, africa in the 1850s he was a german guy but somehow i got a british commission and uh you know obviously the british were sending him down there to see how reasonable would be to go and intel plunder exactly scoping uh, but he was a scientist and he he rationalized going but he what he witnessed you know what was an awful slave trade and he he said that in his notes he said that the 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 african slave trade trade on other african tribes was shocking him he thought it was simply sort of an imperialistic type of thing, you know, slave, and they realized that the slave trade was going on. Why, why were Africans uh, enslaving other tribes? Because it was, you know, you know, your big tank against my big tank. It's just a different paradigm. I mean, my point is, is it's well, it's like local cops. This system's destroying their kids' future, but they'll still be mercenaries and do it. They'll, but but look, I would take anybody at any system. I once went out with a woman who grew up in this in the Soviet system, emigrated in the 80s, lived there until she was 11 years old. She said her parents would tell her, "Don't don't talk too loud about the government because the neighbors will report us." I mean, imagine growing up in a society like that. Well, you know what? Now we actually have to think about. It. No, no, they have people report us all the time. We have FBI showing up all the time. And, and I mean, I can't hand magazines out. When I was on the trip in closing down in Galveston, taking a few days off with the kids down there at the beach, and Max Cabrera with the street team, you know, local crew we hired. I talked about this. That has been doing this for years. Never had it happen. He goes, "Yeah." They said we can't have bumper stickers on the car. And I go, "You mean parked at a parking space?" He goes, yeah. They said well, they're going to arrest us for that. If if we, you'll give us a ticket, we don't leave, and we can't have a magazine. I said, you're. I go, this is a joke, right? And he goes, no. Even I thought it was a joke. And then, because that'd be national news, but happened in you know Russia or something today. And then I, I said, next time the cops come up, call me. So he calls me. They're there with the code enforcer, and the guy goes, no, I'm a listener. I don't like doing this, but my boss told me I'm going to do this. You, you need to take the stickers off, or we're going to give you tickets. And if you don't go, then they're arrested. Let's look at it from a different perspective. The guy that's standing there, right? I'm a listener. I know this is stupid, but this guy up here told me I better do it. I meet TSA agents who are frisking me down, who are embarrassed to be frisking me down because they know my music and they know me and, you know, they know and I'm not a terrorist. Right. And they're embarrassed. Why, why are, why are good hearted Americans willing to follow orders? Do you know what I mean? You know, why in, in other tyrannical regimes were those people willing to follow orders? I think you have to address those questions. And I don't think you can address, address them on the, on the veracity of the fact, which is it's dumb. Okay, most people, if you sat them down at a table and explained the story, they'd say that's dumb. 
Okay, but this kind of dumb stuff's going on every day. Kids being expelled, you know, uh, some kid said to another kid, five years old, something about shooting them. I mean, I grew up playing cowboys and Indians. It doesn't mean I if a, it, if a donut looks like a gun, they're kicked out. What about the bubble gun girl? Right, but I'm saying is I think you have to you have to start getting into the mind of of and I hear you say it and, and I and I think it's a powerful message when you say, Hey, you know, you out there who think, you know, you're gonna get away with this and they're not gonna come looking for you at some point, you know, don't be fooled, right? But I think you have to get into the heart and mind of what their motivation is. You know, in wrestling we They know that, but they're in the minute, they're scared. What they say in wrestling, right? The bad guy has to believe in what he's doing. So even the bad guy believes in what he's doing. You know, he's been propagandized. I'm do I, I'm beating this kid down for America or, you know, whatever they're thinking. You understand? I'm dropping this drone on a whole wedding party to get one guy. Collateral damage. I'm, I'm killing a terrorist. I would like you to see, see you broaden the message and bring in people who can speak to this kind of, uh, whether it's a historian. I mean, maybe once a week it could be a special feature. A historian. Uh, uh, bring in people from the Catholic Church. Bring in Buddhists. Bring in Native American elders. Ask how do you guys view this, or girls? Maybe your message, and maybe the message of, of other enlightened thinkers, really only reaches people who have enough educational background or cognitive background to, to recognize that it's a good argument, right? A lot of people are raised on junk food and Gilligan's Island and probably don't have the, uh, I'm not saying they're stupid, but they don't have the intellectual capacity because they've never been in that situation to have to think like that. A lot of Lower classes, which I come from in my family background, they're predicated on survival, right? What was, what was the, some of the way the election was, this last election was waged? It's survival. Hey, if I vote for this guy, I got a better chance of surviving than if I go for, vote for this. And then he raises payroll taxes on poor people. It's too late now, right? But I'm saying is, my point is, is you got you to explain to somebody who doesn't necessarily think like you. I think you diversify the import of the message so that it resonates at a higher level, right? Most people believe in what America means, even though there's plenty of evidence to suggest we've killed and maimed plenty, right? There are people out there, veterans, who, who really struggle with why they went here. You know, I know one kid who struggles with why he went over to Iraq. And the power structure knows that. They get them when they're 18, knowing later they're going to wake up, but by then they're now listed as the terrorist. What do you think about them saying veterans are the number one terror threat? It's interesting from this perspective. Uh, look, you know, you watch the, you know, basketball game, and there's the commercial for the, you know, uh, whatever, the Air Force, and it's like a video game, you know, drones and you know, it looks like you, I literally think it's a video game commercial until I realize it's for the for the Air Force or something. They're blurring it. Right. But they're bringing these people in, believing a set of ideals, which is consistent with, you know, uh, American uh, greatness or something. And freedom. Right. OK, so let's say let's say you believe it and you and, and nothing I say or you say would change their mind. America's the best. And I did this for a reason. I serve my country. Well, now we have a lot of evidence to suggest that uh, they're not being supported when they come home, the veterans' administrations, all this kind of stuff, right? And even like uh, not, them not allowing them to show the coffins when they come back, all that kind of stuff, right? Why are they flipping that narrative? Because that's a pretty big flip from you're a hero, you know, applaud the troops to you can't even hold a Now we don't trust you with a gun. <laughs> gun. Wow. Or I saw that clip where the, the city councilman objected because there was a guy in the, in the, who was a veteran had a right to carry. And he got, did you see that clip? Yes. And he got up and left because he said, I don't want to be in here. And the guy was not breaking the law. He's a veteran. You know what I mean? They want to send him to foreign countries to kill people. But now when they have that right to defend themselves and have a second amendment here, they don't even want to be around it. It's like, but again, the technocrats want to send him to kill, but now they're scared of him. I'm trying to take, I'm just using this as a point to illustrate what I'm talking about. What's the higher perspective on that? Why do we sell somebody so hard as a hero? And then what propaganda do we need to use to believe that they're dangerous? It's like spiking a cannon after a war. They're, they're, they're decommissioning a weapon. Right, but wh why do they need to do it that way? That's why I'm saying I watch that trend. Yeah, why are they? Because it's waking people up. I think the establishment has been very smart and professional in the past, but I think they've been smoking their own dope. I mean, more and more, because I always heard the argument that, you know, the elite are crazy, and I'm like, oh, no, you know, they've got it all together. I, why do you think they're doing it? 
That's a really good question. I think that's a very real question. Um, I think the speed of information, even to the let, let's say you're let's say you're you're in, in in American intelligence and you're actually sitting at the top of the data heap and you can see where it's going, and you're talking to the guy who's predicting what it's going to be like in 20 or 30 years. I think even if you're that guy or that woman, you're sitting on top of that data heap, I think the speed at which this is moving is, is probably almost beyond human conception. It was almost a year ago that we did this groundbreaking interview with Billy. I've interviewed him several times and met him before. He's a regular listener. But I was talking to him just a few months ago, and he said he was ready to come on. I just never got it done. But he knows how that is. He's busy. So you're going to get this in the new year. I'm going to call Billy Corrigan and try to get him back on the radio or TV with us. Uh, but it's always good to go into the vault and uh, re-air some of these amazing interviews. That is it for this special edition of InfoWars Nightly News, December 26, 2013. Great job to the crew that came in to run the show and get it out for you on the day after Christmas. And we will be back on the radio tomorrow live, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. And it's David Knight that is doing the radio show tomorrow, but I will also be calling in. And you know me, I'll probably show up and take over and be running in the studio uh, over and over again. Uh, but uh, And then I'll be back Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. myself doing the show. And then, of course, uh, in the new year, we're going to be in the new studio. So look for all of that and more. And I want to thank all of you for being members of PrisonPlanet.tv. If you're watching this later on the, online, we encourage that. But it's, 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 it's subscribers that see it first and see it live and see it when it's original and get to see all the films, everything else. Uh, 18 years of material, 11 years is how long PrisonPlanet.tv has been here. And we couldn't have done it without uh, all you out there that are supporters. And remember, a membership to PrisonPlanet.tv is really 11 memberships. It's $5.95 a month. We're still running the Christmas special into New Year's where you can get five plus months. It's like 5.3 months free off the uh, monthly cost uh, when you sign up for a year and you get 11 memberships or sign up for a month of trial membership and you've got 11 memberships right there and can spread the truth with friends and family. So again, thank all of you that are subscribers. And if you are not a subscriber and you're watching us on YouTube or other places, we need your support be able to do things like this and to have all the other folks like Ben Swan to support his media operation, and Ron Paul, and support his burgeoning media operation that's doing a great job. And, and Amber Lyon, who we had on last week about her you know, book and everything, and how she was censored at CNN. We are a platform for you, for, for us, for all of us, together to move forward. We're not in competition with the liberty movement, liberal or conservative or libertarian. We're in competition with tyrants to bring them down. That is our goal. That is our mission. That is the treasure we seek. And as Julius Caesar said, at least he was rumored to have said it in history, and he said these words um, via Shakespeare, who put it in a play, William Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, there is a tide in the affairs of men when taken at the flood leads on to fortune. And the fortune we seek is liberty in our lifetime, a better world, not a darker, more corrupt world, a world where our children can live in peace together, a, a world in which we're not judged by the color of our skin, but by the conduct of our lives and by our deeds, to paraphrase Martin Luther King. A world in which uh, we govern by free will and by free association, not by the boot stomping on the face forever, as George Arwell wrote. So I salute the crew and all of you on this day after Christmas, and we'll see you back tomorrow night with breaking new information. And I'm sure a lot's happening. They always do stuff over Christmas. So tomorrow night, a new original transmission here with InfoWars and Nightly News. And if you're not a subscriber, get over to PrisonPlanet.tv and become one today. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the pure
purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Now you can watch the Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives Gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com.